All right, so welcome back. It's been a while since uh, we got together. It seems like a lot of things have happened since then. So we had our initial meeting in March to sort of kick off the project. And since then we had uh, COVID-19, uh, which has impacted a little bit um, the timelines. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today and some of the methods we're gonna be using, especially as we think about community engagement. So I wanna get some thoughts from you about that today. I'm going to, there's Joe, so let him in. Well, I'm letting him in. I'm just going to pull up uh, the slide deck so that you can take a peek at that. Hi, Joe, we're just getting started. All right. So we're going to cover, um, today is really about taking the opportunity to bring you up to date in terms of where we are with activities uh, with the community safety and well-being plan and uh, get some feedback from you, especially around uh, phase three activities, which is the community engagement piece of it. But I thought we would start by uh, talking about this because since we last met in March, you're seeing some public facing communication about the community safety and well-being plan. So if you haven't had a chance to go and take a look at it, there is a web page on the Elgin County website uh, that provides a bunch of information about the plan, including um, some frequently asked questions, goals, projects, uh, meeting agendas, so opportunities for people to become involved. There's also an email address if people want to email uh, and have either thoughts or questions about the project. So that's sort of the initial uh, communication strategy. There's going to be more that we want to talk about today, especially as we think about the community engagement and how we continue to make people aware about the project uh, and how they can be involved. But that's sort of, those are sort of the initial landing spots if you're looking at pointing anyone uh, to information about the plan and where we are about it. So those are new since March. So I just wanted to remind you that uh, we had four phases to the approach to developing the community safety and well-being plan. And I'm going to walk through uh, each of them and give you an update uh, around where we are. So we did start in March with the kickoff meetings. So that's the phase one activities, which was really about doing some planning for the project and onboarding uh, the two different committees. So you know that we have you as the coordinating committee uh, for the community safety and well-being plan and then we also have an advisory committee and at uh, the March meeting you decided that the advisory committee would not be uh, by invitation but that you would leave it all sort of encompassing very inclusive and participatory so anybody who's on our mailing list and or anyone who wants to be involved uh, can be part of the advisory committee and I know when I get to sort of talking about it that we've uh, had a sort of a touch with uh, about 118 different organizations um, through the advisory committee piece of it. So we did have a meeting uh, with you at the beginning of March. Then we had planned to do a kickoff with the advisory committee uh, in April. Uh, that was canceled due to COVID-19. And instead, we sort of shifted a little bit. And what we decided to do is to do an online video uh, introducing them to the project. So. Uh, you would have seen uh, Julie gave hello a bit about the project. We had uh, the warden and the mayors uh, talk about it. So the three of them uh, did some welcoming remarks on that video. And then I walked uh, the advisory committee through an introduction to the project, the phases. So at least it gave them an introductory piece or orientation to what the project was about. Um, so that's the online video. Uh, as of last week, there were 112 unique page views uh, of the page that has the video embedded in it. Uh, so that introductory email was sent to 118 different agencies and organizations, and they represent 32 different sectors. So that was sent out uh, sort of mid to later May to do some orientation with that group. So that's sort of phase one where we've introduced the project, uh, make sure everyone knows um, that it's happening. Phase two really focused on the data and research 
uh, aspect of the project. And you'll see we've had some pretty good uh, success with that. So I sent you a data package, which is very long. Uh, also, um, you'll note in the data package that we collected data across these 14 different areas and that in each of the areas there are multiple indicators. So many different indicators uh, to tell us what's happening in each of those areas uh, across the Elgin County region. And then to make it easier, so we provide some key highlights or findings in each of the areas. So that's how I've put the package together for you right now is that you'll see those key highlights up front. So for people who want sort of tell me what it means, um, they can take a look at the key highlights and findings. And then for people who want to dig in uh, to each of the indicators and have a more in-depth look at the data, all of the data is um, in multiple attachments uh, behind the key highlights and the findings. So what we did is tried to make sure we looked across again, if we go back to the community safety and well-being planning framework to go across each of these four rings in the planning framework to make sure that we were collecting data that would inform us about the risk and protective factors uh, that are in play across the Eldon County region. So I'm going to stop there and ask you if you had any sort of comments or thoughts about the data package. Right now, it's, um, I call it more of a background document for us. So when we think about actually putting together the community safety and well-being plan, that won't be in the plan, but it's more uh, there to help inform us as we start to identify what those priority areas might be that we want to focus on uh, in the plan. Any thoughts or feedback on the data package? You'll note in it there are um, some missing pieces, mainly from local agencies. I know it was a challenge uh, for local service providers over the past number of months to have the time uh, to provide data it, in terms of they were trying to survive uh, based on the services that they were providing. So you'll note there are a few little sort of place markers uh, that I've put in the data where we're still awaiting some, some data from our local service agencies. Wendell did have a good uh, point this morning. He emailed me and asked if we could change some of the language. So instead of uh, referencing Elgin County, which people may assume is the county, uh, that we actually broaden that language and call it the Elgin County region. What are your thoughts about that, just in terms of sort of the, how we're contextualizing? I see Joe nodding. Other thoughts around that? That language work? Yes? Okay. Any other thoughts about the data package? Jennifer, just before you move on, and mm -hmm. not specifically about the, it's one of speaking, not specifically about the data package, but one thing I should know this, but I don't. Is the website and then information linked on the city's website? And if not, we should make that happen, I think. That is a great question. Yeah. So if we go back to the website, it would be great if each of the local municipal partners uh, could actually put a link to the to the web page that's on the Elgin County website. So how would we how would we make that happen? Who do we need to well coordinate that Jennifer and the county okay. we'll make sure that the, the appropriate link and any uh, information needed is sent out to all constituent municipal partners as well as the town of Elmer and City of St. Thomas. Great. Thanks, Wendell. It's a good point. Any other thoughts, questions about the data package? Anything you saw missing? Anything else you'd like us to sort of pursue that you didn't see in it? No, no. Chris, if I may, Jennifer. I, Go ahead. If I may, Jennifer, Chris here. I thought the information was very deep. Only for the some more funding for this program. So the information, it's like I say, it covers off a number of areas that I think can benefit a number of different community partners and moving forward. So 
well done. Great. Did anyone else have problems hearing everything Chris said? Is it my internet connection? No one else is looking at me. No, no. Okay. So one of the, I'm glad you sent that email asking about it, Chris, because what you actually uh, raised for me was the question around how do we share the data? Because it is a really great resource, not just for developing the community safety and well-being plan, uh, but for other organizations as well as they undertake either planning or grant grant applications. Um, so I wanted to, at some point, I think we should chat about that uh, in terms of how we actually share share it uh, out in a broader way. It could be that we put something on the community safety and well-being web web page where there's sort of an access to the data but uh as we finalize that i think that's a good question around how do we actually share it more widely are there any thoughts about that jennifer i don't know if there's something going on with your internet connection or mine but you uh, you cut out at the start of that conversation and then part way through as well oh. All right, let me try again. So I'll just make it really short. So uh, question is really good data package. How do we actually share it more widely? So do we put like a button on the community safety well-being web page where it has the data so people can access it? Uh, are you open to making it uh, public to other groups? What do you think about that? Oh, you're all frozen. Are you back? Jennifer? Yes. Um, it's Mary. Um, I think maybe we should be able to um, share it with other people, as many people as we can. That information is, um, let's put it this way, it's an eye opener. And I think that as many people that we can share it with would be good because I think people need to understand some of the issues that we have in our area. And it's very clear in this information package that there are areas that need, we, we need help. <laughs> I mean, there's some statistics there that are scary almost. So I think, uh, you know, the people that we're working with all the volunteers and groups that have, that have been helping us out, by all means, send, make sure they all get the information. But I do think that um, we should open it up to other people too. I'm not sure how to go about it, but I think it's valuable information and important information that, uh, like I say, will really be an eye opener. There's a couple of things I hear Mary said, could we send it to the advisory committee members, which are the community partners and organizations, which we will be using that data with them anyway to start to identify priority risks. So, so that's certainly a good group to share with. So then the other question is, do we share it more widely? Like, would you want to see it on the community safety and well-being webpage? I would think that's a good idea. I think that's important. Other people, what do you think? Mary, do you have a thought? I, I think we should be putting it out to as many people as we can. That's, that's the, my take on it. I mean, what I said when Chris asked if he could use it uh, with police services, it's public, it's publicly available information. So it's from public sources. I mean, the one thing we've done is we've sort of shown you the longitudinal look at it. And we've also pulled out the key highlights uh, piece of it. So are people okay if we put it on the community safety and well-being webpage? Not if you 
Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes I think okay. it's a good idea. Okay. So we'll do two things. We do, we'll do like a direct uh, email out to our advisory committee, and I'll do that as part of a broader sort of consultation with them, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And then we can also add it onto the uh, web page so it's uh, available as well. Uh, we'll have to maybe think, I haven't done much work on sort of the branding piece of it. So maybe I'll work with Julie and her group around sort of the look and feel of that document as we think it's going to be going out um, as a public document. Coordinate that piece. Yeah, okay. Uh, so let's go. To, so that's one activity uh, that we've been doing under uh, phase two. So the other uh, piece that we've done is we undertook an inventory of the existing planning tables. Uh, so we collected data about 19 planning tables and I sent that uh, to you as well. Really, that will help us as we think about what work is already underway in your communities versus what work needs to happen. So as we get to that point where we're doing the gap analysis between these are the priority risks, what do we want to do? We should already, we should be looking at what is already happening. Uh, so we have a good inventory uh, of those uh, tables and what either they're working on or what they're working on in terms of the priorities they've identified uh, within sort of their scope scope of work as a planning table. So that's been done as well. Uh, and then the third piece uh, that is in progress is uh, looking at local research. So one of the things uh, that we asked the advisory committee in their initial survey was, is there any local research that we should be looking at that would help inform the development of the community safety and well-being plan and I tell you I got some really great responses which is good uh, so got it you'll see a good mix here of things I didn't even know about uh, Elgin St. Thomas selfie which is got some really interesting data in it identify sort of some priority areas there through to some of their work they're doing got a really great environmental scan from the St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital so it actually helped me dig into things we may not be seeing necessarily uh, publicly right on websites, but access to information that's already been collected uh, about the communities uh, in the Elgin County region. So what I'm doing is going through each of those documents and identifying what in those reports uh, will help us as we start to think about community safety, well-being, and identifying any priority risks. As you look across those reports, are there any you're seeing missing from that list? If you do, you can pop me an email so we can get that's something that uh, doesn't have to be completed right now, but can be something that we uh, continue to add on, especially as we go through the community engagement portion uh, of the um, project. So that's sort of where we are in phase two. So pretty good uh, in terms of completion with the data package, the inventory, uh, and then sort of in progress on the local research and what it can tell us. So the other piece we started then is we've started into the phase three, which is that uh, community engagement piece of it. So we did an uh, initial uh, survey out to our advisory committee members. So as you know, I noted earlier, um, there were 118 uh, organizations on that list. 38 responded to the survey, which is about 32.2%. Uh, so low number responded and a pretty good representation of the sectors though, which was interesting. So 18 different sectors that you'll see in this lovely colorful chart over here in terms of what sectors uh, responded uh, to the survey. This uh, survey was, as I, well, I called it an initial survey because really we asked three questions. We said, uh, does your agency collect any data? So like service level data that you think would help us in informing the plan. And I got uh, a couple of responses, which I followed up on to get the data from them. We asked them, uh, do you have any or are aware of any local uh, research reports we should looking at? So that's where I got the list of research reports. And then the final question we asked them uh, was, 
Uh, what do you think are the top five issues, challenges, and or risks uh, that you think should be uh, a focus in the community safety and well-being plan? So very sort of high level initial thoughts uh, from people. So here uh, is the collation of that answers to the question around what do you think should be those top five issues. So you'll see I've shown you uh, what percentage of the respondents selected or named uh, that issue as well as how many sectors were represented in those responses. It could be multiple people from one sector, but just to give you a sense of Oh, it's only one sector that's identifying an issue versus we're having people from across sectors identifying an issue, I think uh, is an important piece as well as how many people are identifying it. So you'll see um, for sure sort of these top three floated very quickly to the top with 47% or higher naming them. Uh, the handout that I gave you sort of showed some sub uh, headings underneath each of them. Uh, so housing and homelessness uh, came up to the top of that list. You'll see uh, in the more detailed document I provided to you that there are people that named uh, access to affordable housing was named by eight people. Homelessness was named by seven. Then we had youth homelessness, supportive housing and safe housing specifically named as well. Uh, and then the second uh, priority was mental health services and supports. Uh, there wasn't really anything specific in the subheadings of that. The big one people just said was mental health services or supports. Children and youth came up with just sort of three respondents, uh, but we did have people from 11 sectors. And then substance use addictions and related services and supports uh, was the third one with 47.7% of respondents from across nine different sectors. The top response in there was uh, illegal drug use and addiction. So those were the top. Uh, initial things and I'm going to show you here to, this is sort of one piece of the puzzle so this is our uh, community partners your advisory community telling us what they think uh, are the issues the other piece we'll be looking at will be the data we'll be looking at what the community has to say so this is sort of a first glimpse into what we're hearing uh, from our advisory committee around what they're seeing are some of those top issues that should be a priority in the community safety and well-being plan any initial thoughts about those responses? Any surprises? No, yeah. Okay, so let me tell you what we're doing with that. Yeah, go ahead. Is that Sally? Sally, did you want to say something? No, I okay. hadn't said anything. Is there someone else? No? Okay. So we had an initial survey with our advisory committee. So I know um, we didn't get the response we were hoping for. So we got 38 agencies, sort of 32% of agencies responding. So I'm starting to think about how do we uh, continue to engage this group uh, in different ways in a dialogue. Surveys are hard because it's one way, right? I ask you a question, you tell me, versus how do we engage in a dialogue uh, about some of the content. So one of the ways that we're uh, doing this is an advisory committee discussion forum. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go and take a look at it, uh, you should. So there's the link to it. I hope you'll sign up. We've had, uh, I sent out an email a couple of days ago, we've had 12 people already sign up and engage in some conversation uh, around it. So I'm hoping people will use this and I'm gonna keep sort of poking people with emails and discussion topics that it'll be an opportunity for that dialogue versus I ask you a question, you tell me and that's, there's no follow up on it. And that I'll be putting out different discussion questions for people to talk about are related to the collected data the issues and the uh, priorities. This is a closed discussion forum. So it was the link was sent out to everybody on uh, the advisory committee. So that's who we're looking for being involved as well as yourselves uh, from the coordinating committee. Um, so you'll see we've already started with our first uh, discussion. So what I've done is I shared the document I shared with you, which were the top issues to be addressed. 
on what came out of that. And then you'll see underneath it, those top issue responses. So the top sort of six that I shared with you. And then I asked people, what do you think of this list? Does it reflect what you think of the top community safety and well-being issues, challenges, or risks in Elgin? And we've had a number of responses. So people are already starting to dialogue on that topic. Next, what I see uh, happening with the discussion forum is I'm gonna start to share some of the data. So I'll take sort of each data topic. So probably the data related to housing and homelessness is the first one. Ask people what they're thinking, thinking about are there sort of specific priority risks within housing and homelessness that we need to be paying attention to. So getting some dialogue will help us as we begin to sort of narrow what we think we'll wanna have go into the community safety and well-being plan. This is one, just one tool with the advisory committee. We'll still be having working sessions with them as well. Uh, but I thought in the meantime, how do we continue to get people engaged in terms of dialoguing about what's happening uh, in the communities and talking to each other about it versus talking to necessarily just to, to me about it. So that's one way that we're doing that. So I hope you have an opportunity to go online uh, and take a look at that. Have any of you been on yet to look at it? I don't think so. Catherine, no, I don't think you have. Carolyn's uh, I've gone on. This has been on. Yes. <laughs> Great. How was it in terms of user friendliness? Very, very user friendly. Great. So that's a tool that uh, I'll be using over the course of the summer to continue to work with the advisory committee. As I said, I'm going to be sending out another email to the advisory committee tomorrow. Again, just saying we've already started a conversation about this. I'm introducing another conversation about this. So hopefully getting to driving people uh, to using the discussion forum and having uh, more of a discussion that way online about it. So that's another tool we're using as part of community engagement that's been launched. So the other things uh, I wanna talk to you about today is we wanna continue over the course of the summer and into the early fall uh, to do some more community engagement uh, about the topic. So uh, I'm gonna ask you today about how do we engage the general public? Uh, I've got a suggestion around an online survey for that. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, maybe I'll go to that, then I'll come back. I'm just gonna go put your slide here. So um, I'm working with another community and I think Ottawa has used this as well. So this is uh, an opportunity with the general public to gauge their perception of community safety and well-being across 18 different elements that affect community safety and well-being. And these elements are the ones that you would see in the provincial uh, community safety and well-being planning framework. Um, so what I'm gonna get your input on today is uh, developing a survey where we would sort of describe the elements. So let's say we take criminal activity, we would describe what it is, and then we would ask people four questions about that element. So we'd ask them, how much of an impact does criminal activity have on the safety and well-being of you and the people you live with? So more on, a, on an individual level, how much uh, does it have an impact on the safety and well-being of the municipality you live in and uh, in Elgin County region uh, as a whole? So getting people to actually talk about the impact of that on those three different levels. So it would give us a look at Sort of what are people experiencing themselves within each of our municipalities as well as um, across Elgin County as a region. Uh, then we'd ask the question around what's the nature of the impact? So is it positive or negative? Because some of them could be positive. So social support, you may have people say, oh, it's a positive impact on me. Um, and then what priority do you feel this element should have in the community safety and well-being plan? So should it be a low priority, a high priority, somewhere in between? So again, getting their perception of what they think should be focused on in the community safety and well-being plan, and then asking them a little bit around why they think this way. So that's what I'm proposing to go out with as an initial a survey to the general public. It would be a lot, uh, you'll see by all of it, it's all sort of tick. We are gonna be rating a lot of things and getting them to think across those 18 different elements. To me, it's one other piece of the puzzle as we start to think about developing the plan where we've got the data and local research, we've got thoughts from your uh, advisory committee, so your community partners and organizations, and sort of how do we then fit in that general public in terms of the perceptions that they have around community safety and well-being. So I'm gonna get some of your thoughts today around 
first of all, uh, whether you like that approach, if not, how or when do you see us sort of bringing in the, the general public in terms of talking about community safety and well-being? Any initial? Hi, Jennifer, it's Sally. Yes. Um, I, I'm just seeing your questions. Um, part C, you say Eldon County as a whole. Just so that the same confusion we had earlier, it probably should say Elgin hyphen St. Thomas as a whole. Okay. Or Elgin County and St. Thomas as a whole, or some way so they realize that St. Thomas is a part of this. Yeah. Because right. that's, you know, that's important. Yeah, that's a good point. Because I'm, I'm assuming then from what you're saying is if I said Elgin County, people think it doesn't mean St. Thomas. Is that a correct assumption? Yes, just because it's two different governments so i think that yeah. it's important to note that it's like elmer is part of uh elgin county st thomas is an independent municipality okay thank you do you like this idea of being very specific in terms of asking people their perception of community safety and well-being it so in the survey too, there would also be, um, we'd ask for demographic information so we could filter it to tell us by municipality what people are feeling. We could do it by sort of age groups. So is it a millennial versus a boomer? So there's also different ways we can sort of look at, are the perceptions different depending on some demographic data? You might want to ask, sorry, urban versus rural as Great. well. Yeah, what do you think, Wendell? Well, I was just going to add a dose of, uh, of uh, what we have just recently experienced. We went through quite a campaign in the, over, uh, over the last number of weeks relative to our strategic plan and online survey. We had a uh, marketing plan. We used radio ads and print ads and social media to promote it. And uh, we ended up with approximately 600 respondents, just That's so right. you can the sensitivity to it. That's great. If I can, if I can ask, is there a reason transportation isn't one of your 18 elements? So it's not uh, named in the provincial framework around community safety and well-being in terms of yeah. a risk factor. It could. I would have thought the, would have thought the well-being piece, but it, I, I just noticed it was missing. That's yeah. all. Yeah. And that's, that's the opportunity. If there's pieces you want to build in to test out as well, we can do that. So if that's one you'd want to have name. Thoughts on that, transportation? I would agree with Joe on that. I think that, especially for rural areas, that is very important for the safety and well-being. Yeah. The other thing that's come up, um, and it came up through another a conversation I was having with someone else, especially around COVID was around, and I talked about it in the discussion forum is around the digital divide and internet access. So not just internet access, but digital literacy. So if I think of my, my parents who I have to purchase their groceries online because they can't figure out how to use PC Express. I think about digital literacy and how we've had to very quickly shift into an environment that's online, uh, which, goes to internet access, do you know how to use it? All those kinds of things. I'm wondering if that's something you wanna test in this as well. Thoughts on that? That's a major issue throughout the county because as you can tell, I don't have good internet access. That's why I'm by phone. Yeah. So something around sort of internet access or digital literacy. Any other sort of key pieces that you know, sort of the context in your communities, anything else you'd want to test out to get people to talk about in the, in the survey? So I'm assuming I'm, because you're talking about you want to, so let me go back. Would you like to do a survey with the general public right now about sort of getting their perception of it? Community safety and well-being. If 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 we indeed indeed went to the general public now, is that kind of a baseline survey? Is that what you're looking for, so that later on we could compare what initial responses were to after some activity? Yeah, you yeah you can use it both ways. So you could use it uh, not only to inform uh, what you think should be in the plan. So let's say uh, our data is really pointing towards 
housing and homelessness. And then you've got a whole bunch of people in the community saying, oh no, we're, we're concerned about transportation. How do we balance that? Because maybe transportation won't show up in the data, but it's showing up from people's perception around what would help them in terms of safety and well-being. So to me, it's just another piece that we need to look at as you start to think about what you want to have in your plan. And then like you said, Joe, three years from now, you could go out again and do it again and say, hey, have we made a difference? We really focused on element A. Tell us now in terms of what you're thinking about it. Yeah. So do you like the idea of a survey? What it would yes, be... I'm... Go ahead, Sally. I was just going to say yes. I, I think the survey is a good idea. We it's just how we get it to everybody. That's yes. the hard so thing. For... We develop, I'll develop some content and we'll be looking especially to our municipal partners and our advisory committee people to push it out uh, through social media. So how do we get it out to as many people as possible that way and see how, how we do? Jennifer, mm -hmm. it's Mary. Um, just one comment about the survey. I think the less onerous it is, the more participants you'll have. So yeah. we just got to keep it so it's streamlined and not very onerous because I think the more onerous it is, a lot of people just shy away from it. They don't want to do it. Yeah, so if you look at how many elements there are, it's a lot. So in my it guess is it'll probably take people about 20 minutes to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do is do some incentives. Okay. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> it's always good. You always think, what would make someone, what's enough of an incentive that I'd be willing to invest 20 minutes of my time? So it's also valuing people's time. Um, so I'm thinking probably doing, uh, how many municipalities are there across Elgin? Eight? There's okay. seven. And then St. Thomas makes eight. Eight. So yeah, I was thinking of doing eight $50 gift card to like the grocery store of your choice. And then we would do one per municipality. So we try to get a good geographic piece around that. Would Sounds that good, Jennifer. Give you enough incentive to do the survey. <laughs> do you think grocery gift card is a good incentive other kind of gift cards thoughts on that grocery or walmart i think grocery I think, would be great that's my opinion though but yeah i agree with the grocery i think that's something everybody needs so it's a good idea Okay, so I'm gonna get working on drafting that up as well as the content. So we'll be looking at you helping us um, push it out through social media and I'll provide key messages that can be used on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, so that you can just attach stuff and, and provide links to the survey. So hopefully we can move it out that way. So that's a general public survey. Just one uh, quick question, if yeah. I may, before we move ask the online survey, will there be print copies available or should there be print copies available? That yes. is a great question. Yes, we can. The question will be where will we distribute them? Because I know people now, now, especially right now, aren't keen on taking stuff from people with paper, but I know there are people who don't have access uh, to the internet as well. Uh, so maybe just as a suggestion, we could, um, upon request from a community member who needed a print copy, mm. mail that out. Yeah. I don't think we'll be, we'll be overwhelmed with requests, so it at least provides another, another way for them to have access. Yeah, and what I can do is um, when we send out uh, the content, so send it out to you, municipalities, and the advisory committee, I'll send three things. I'll send a web link to the survey. So for people who want to do it online or a QR code, which if people like, you can just take a picture and they'll take you to the survey. And then I'll also send a PDF of the survey and note that people can print it for a hard copy. Jennifer, uh, Central Elgin does what we call a CE buzz every two weeks in every newspaper around. We put 
um, an information, you know, whatever things. And we could certainly put it in there that if they wanted a physical, like we could tell them where to go to do it online, but we could also tell them if they wanted a physical copy. Because a lot of the seniors that have issues are the ones who are not using the internet or social media. It's mainly younger people that are using those things. Yeah, so, so where is open that could actually distribute a hard copy? Could, I mean, one place it would be at the county building and maybe because our municipal office is there as well, just having a box in the entrance way that they could pick one up and then deposit it in the box when they were done. A box. I don't know. We have other boxes there, but it's just a thought. I know it's tough with COVID right now, how you do it physically, but yeah. Josh, do you, are you open? Is Town of Elmer Municipal Office open? Yes, we, uh, we are offering limited service through the front vestibule and we have a drop box. So that would certainly be an option there. Okay. What about uh, City of St. Thomas? Do you have anything open right now too where surveys could be? I think maybe we might talk to our friends at the library. I think that might be the best mm -hmm. spot. We can follow up on that. Okay. Uh, just for your information, we had a really good success with uh, online surveys through uh, SurveyMonkey, and it was a really good cross sector of uh, demographics in terms of age, 20 to 30. They were all pretty much within um, 15 to 20 percent right across the board. So. Uh, don't discount the online stuff because it, it does work quite well. Yeah, that's great. One of the things we're going to do um, uh, in the survey, I'm also going to ask a question if people would be willing to be involved in a focus group. So that's a good way to collect so then give me their contact information so we can contact them. Because the other thing I want to do is after we do the online survey, as I said, surveys are great and this is going to be good because it's going to be tick box. It's going to give us sort of a good snapshot of what people think about community safety and well-being. But it's not like having a conversation uh, with people where you hear their stories uh, about what's happening and turn their experience around community safety and well-being. So you'll see under community engagement, I also have, I'm putting conversation circles, uh, which uh, I will do after we have the general public do the online survey and we ask them if they're interested, I'm gonna call them focus groups, but conversation circles. Then what I will do is hold a conversation circle um, in key geographic areas across the county. So we do one in St. Thomas, we do one in Elmer, we'll go out into the West so that we'll do them strategically so that we get that uh, different perspective from the different geographic areas around how they're feeling about community safety and well-being. So it'll be more of that anecdotal uh, piece uh, as well. So that'll be sort of the follow-up to the survey that then we'll move into that face-to-face -face with the general public to get more of the, the stories about community safety and well-being and what they hope for community safety and well-being or what would uh, help them feel safer in their communities. So sort of that piece. Um, the other piece that I think is going to be emergent then is do we want to do interviews or focus groups uh, with other key stakeholders? So are there other groups that we need to talk to? Are there key people in the community that you think uh, would be helpful to talk to or key groups that would be helpful for me to talk to? So I'm going to ask you that question now sort of off uh, the top if you think there are any that would be helpful for me to do more of a face-to-face -face with. And knowing that the process is going to also be organic and evolve. So let's say we identify um, homelessness as an issue, then maybe you'll identify who you want me to talk to. So it's not like I'm just going to go and talk to individuals or groups right now, but also as we continue through the process, there, there will be the opportunity for those interviews uh, and focus groups. As you sort of think about our beginning steps and think about starting to identify what we may want to have in the plan beyond sort of working with that big advisory committee as a whole, doing some work with the general public. Are there other either key individuals or groups uh, that you'd like to see me do some sort of face-to-face, -face, online face-to-face -face with in terms of um, gathering information for the community safety and well-being plan? Jen, it's uh, Josh here. I, I think that is a, a great approach, especially in Elmer's case. There's uh, there's a few community organizations, whether it's the uh, the Elgin, I believe it's the Homeless Initiative, 
and uh, obviously Mennonite Community Services would would likely be able to be a great resource in uh, in that type of exercise. Other groups or individuals you think I should speak to? Sort of initially. And don't worry if there aren't, because I said, I think this is going to be organic, right? So if we decide, oh, youth homelessness, then we say, okay, let's go talk to youth who are homeless. Let's say, okay, maybe that we get more targeted as we sort of narrow our focus around what would be in the plan. This is sort of that broad net where we're trying to sort of get a sense of where you may want to head in your plan. So any groups or individuals you think would help us or help me do that? Yeah. What about uh, addiction services? Uh, that's a huge piece in our yeah. communities. And uh that's certainly something that we need to take a look at that. And uh, I mean, if you look at pretty much any news media right now, it's about uh, addictions and uh, those kind of things and specifically put, uh, police response to them. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a request in with Addiction Services Thames Valley. They're doing a full sort of data set for me with highlights, but they've been struggling with COVID in terms of getting it done. So I'll do a follow up in terms of doing an interview. I think that's a, a key, key group to talk to as well. Thanks. Anyone and else I, as a starting point? I wonder as well on, uh, on that front if some of the school boards would have uh, representatives that would be able to speak with you from their perspective. Mm, in terms of what they're saying, yeah. Other groups or individuals? It's okay, we'll keep revisiting. This is like the question I'll always, I'll keep asking you every time, uh, every time I see you. So then the other piece I mentioned earlier is uh, once we have uh, all of the data, taking a look at the local research, we've got the general public survey done, then, uh, and I've done the interviews, and we've had those conversations in the community, that's where we're gonna bring back the advisory committee. So that's when they're gonna take all of those pieces of information, and we're gonna start to sift through them and say, what does this actually mean? What do we think should be those priority risks as we have sort of that big comprehensive look at what's happening uh, across, across the region. So I see that happening uh, in the fall. So that's the reason why I'm trying to engage the um, advisory committee right now in terms of that discussion forum and getting them thinking about it and sort of priming them uh, for that for that discussion so that they don't come in cold to it uh, when we have it in the fall and sort of trying to keep them engaged through throughout the process. So that's sort of what I'm thinking about right now in terms of community engagement. As I said, I think it'll be more of a organic and iterative process where we'll just keep going out and asking depending on what we're what we're finding. So I've talked about the puzzle pieces. So this is uh, phase four. So eventually we're gonna be putting uh, together the plan. And as I said, all of the work uh, that we're doing right now will help inform the development of that plan. So that's where we have to look at all of these aspects to actually help us identify what are those priority risks uh, we wanna include in the plan. So we'll be looking at the data and the local research, what does it tell us? What priorities have been already identified by the community? We'll be looking at uh, the advisory committee and sort of the advice they're giving us around top issues and challenges. We'll be looking to the general public in terms of their perceptions, what are their top priorities. Once we've identified uh, sort of the top uh, priority risks, we'll then want to do some of that uh, asset mapping where we say, what's already happening in our community in each of those areas and what else needs to happen. Those are the strategies or initiatives we want to include in the plan. So I see the plan having sort of two pieces to it where it will identify, this is the priority risk. This is what's already happening in our community uh, to address it. And this is what else we're recommending happen. So it'll sort of contain not only what you think should happen, uh, but things that are already happening in the community. So that's sort of where we're headed. I know in terms of timelines, um, the province has um, changed the deadline. So you know the deadline was originally January 1st of 2021 that the 
uh, plan had to be approved by council and be in place. So there is an extension though. We don't have a date as of yet for that extension though. I'm thinking sort of based on the trajectory uh, that we're on, I think we're pretty good for Q1 2021 in terms of, of getting a plan. If we do continue with this community engagement sort of over the course of the summer into the early fall, have a really good working session with the advisory committee or a couple of working sessions with them, then we'll be ready to come to you and do some work with you around sort of piecing, piecing the plan together. So I think we're actually in pretty good shape uh, in terms of putting it together. So that's sort of my update on where we're at. Uh, are there any questions or thoughts about that? I'm going to just stop sharing my screen for a minute. Uh, and or are there other things we need to talk about as a group? So one question I'll have for you is, um, how would you like to continue to be engaged? So I'm hoping some of you may be interested in a discussion forum. And you'll go uh, and take a look at what's, at least if you, even if you don't want to say anything, you can go and sort of look around and see what people are saying so you get a sense of what people are talking about uh, in terms of how they're feeling about community safety and well-being, that that may be one way that you want to be engaged as we sort of go forward. I'll also, as we move through um, some of the next pieces, I'll continue to give you sort of email updates. Uh, I'm a, I think once we have uh, completed the general public survey, I'd like to come back and do some, a presentation of the results to you so you get a first look at what the general public uh, is, is thinking and feeling about community safety and well-being. So I'd, I'd see that as sort of another touch point with you as a group as we move forward. Other ways around how I can, can, you, can you keep you engaged in the topic as well? No. All right. So let me wrap. You are going. So what I will ask uh, is I'm going to work on the general public survey. Uh, so an ask to you will be is can you send it out through your social media pieces to be part of sort of that marketing piece and getting word out uh, about the survey. Um, so that'll be the next thing for you. Uh, yeah, and if you want to take a pop into the discussion forum and take a look at that, I'll keep, I know I sent you the original email with that. I'll keep copying you on the emails I'm sending the advisory committee about the discussion forum. So in case there is a topic you see on there that you're interested in, you can uh, feel free to go, go and take a look at it. So there are other things we need to chat about. Julie, anything from your side? Uh, no, I was just going to add that I think um, Mayor Martin raised a valid point about advertising in the local newspapers. So we'll take out some fairly sizable advertisements in both the Elmer Express and the Times Journal, any other local media sources, uh, just to promote um, the survey and try to do our best to solicit um, any sort of input that we can get. Um, and. I think that was my only my only thought. Wendell, anything from you? Oh, is that Sally? Sorry, just Sally. Um, Julie, when you're doing that, I would think my FM might well be willing to put it on as well. Um, Ian McCollum calls me probably every other day to see if there's anything new. So I'm sure that they would be happy to do it. Um, and so, you know, to just promote the survey and where to get it and all that. So uh, that might be an idea. For sure, that's great feedback. Our, our list that we regularly send uh, information to the media includes about six key contacts. So we'll reach out to all of them and find out what the best way would be to advertise this across LMB and St. Thomas. Great. Wendell, anything from your perspective that we haven't oh, talked about? No, I would just add in terms of the uh, fanning out of the survey. When we when we do things uh, within the city, we really leverage our relationship with the Chamber of Commerce so that they get out to their membership, to our downtown development board, to our economic development corporation, to all those business touch points they have. So that's how we sort of build success of getting where we need to go on some of the stuff. And of course, through our Facebook uh, friends. 
Is there someone, uh, so I know from Elga and I've got Carolyn, who's like the communications person. Is there someone from the city or from Elmer that I should be working with around moving stuff out that way? From the city, you can connect with uh, Heather Welsh. She's the admin assistant to the mayor and I. Okay. So she, we do any of this stuff. She's the one that pushes it out for Marsh and I. Okay. Josh, and, what about you? Uh, you can communicate with me directly on behalf of the town. Okay, great. <clears throat> Great. Any other questions? Thoughts? No. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll also um, send you a copy of the slide deck. So I know I don't think we send it in advance. So if you want to, you'll have that. Uh, I'll send that out after the meeting. Uh, I don't know. Are we posting those as well on the web page? Um, I was thinking of including the slide deck um, as an attachment to the minutes. If you could okay. send me maybe a copy that doesn't have the direct link to the discussion board, uh, mm -hmm. just so that members of the public don't go on there, yes. um, that would be great. Perfect. I will do that. Great. Well, I think that's it. So you can uh, expect another email from me probably tomorrow about the discussion forum. Uh, and then as we move forward with uh, content to distribute the survey to the general public, I'll be sending that out. And then probably the next time we'll see each other will be when we've got the results uh, from the survey and we can take, take a peek at them. So I hope you all enjoy the rest of your summer. I'm not sure I'll see you before then. You'll just get some emails from me. And again, if you have any thoughts or comments about other groups or people you'd like me to chat with, feel free to uh, send them along. I'd be happy to meet with them and have a chat about community safety and well-being. So great, thanks all of you and we will see you soon.